Well, apparently uh, we've been made aware that the script for Dr. Doom is complete and basically ready to go. Um, it was one of the movies that is kind of in, you know, a state of uh, flight, I guess you could say, since the acquisition of Fox. Um, it was something that they had originally kind of been working on. So it's kind of in that state of limbo where, you know, it's ready to go, but it, it kind of needs to be passed through the now, you know, leadership of the overall Marvel and superhero universe to, to basically see if it's, if it's up to snuff and if they want to actually do it. Okay. Um, so that's, that's kind of where it's at now. It's ready to go. They, they want to do it, but, um, the question is, is, is it still going to happen? And interestingly, you know, Dr. Doom for people that aren't necessarily aware of is kind of in the fantastic four kind of world typically. And as we have talked prior, those movies haven't particularly been, uh, as fantastic as their name would indicate. So, I don't know how much that comes into play with Dr. Doom and whether or not they feel like, it, you know, is it worth it to do that? Is it worth it to do it right now? Is this script going to be what the current Marvel regime uh, wants and is used to, particularly when you look at things like Dark Phoenix that clearly, you know, didn't give them what they wanted. Right. Um, so we've seen Dr. Doom previously. Um, he was in both renditions of the Fantastic Four. Was he in the Silver Surfer one? one? Well, you've got you've got. Are you talking about? Okay, so they the number one. You've got the two different cast for sevens, and then okay, yes, so, and he was correct. in the the new one okay. with uh, correct Miles Teller. And Miles Teller. Mister Bags yeah. confirms. Yeah. So I don't remember who played him in the first one. Um, in the second one was. Um, one of the guys from Nip Tuck, and I can't think of the actor's name right now off the top of my head. Um, he was he was the one of the doctors from that TV show, if you remember that back in the day from uh, FX, uh, I believe it was. Um, but, uh, it, you know, I didn't hate any of the Fantastic Four. They weren't great. I'm not saying that I thought they were these amazing movies. But I didn't hate them. I especially the second one. I was actually a big fan of the cast. Um, I thought the cast was w had a lot of potential in it. You had Miles Teller as um, Mr. Fantastic. You had Michael B. Jordan as uh, the Flash or um, Human Torch. Flash. Human Torch. I don't know where the Flash came from. Johnny. Human Torch. Yeah, Johnny. Th that's right. Um, then you had Kara or um, um, Kate Mara, who played. Um, uh, Miss Invisible, Invisible, Invisible Woman, yeah. um, and then uh, Jamie uh, Jamie Bell played the thing, and so all four of those actors are really good actors. I like all of them. Um, I, there was just they really just messed that one up from a, a script standpoint, special effects standpoint. I mean, they really kind of studio interference up. out the wazoo on that one yeah. from yeah. what I've heard. Well, yeah, that one. I mean, there was so much potential there, and and the the actor who played Doctor Doom. Um, again, I man, I wish I could remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but he's he's a very egotistical plays the egotistical very well. Um, he did it in Nip Tuck. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what his name was. I can't. It's gonna bug the crap out of me if I don't if I don't look it up right now. Um, so. <laughs> apologies that i have to to do that um that guy that joey oh, bags wait, no. posted in chat was the first guy julian mcmahon julian mcmahon was the first one that's yeah. right i liked him in the first one i don't remember who this guy was oh him i do remember him he, he i he wasn't as memorable to me but i i do know who he is now that i'm looking at it um he was in dawn of the planet of the apes that's where he was from um, he was the one soldier that did not like working with the the apes, um, and uh, got himself killed. Uh, Toby, no, Toby Kebbell was an ape. Sorry, Toby Kebbell played an ape. Oh, he was the ape. He was he was the ape that didn't like yeah he working was, with um, the humans. I don't remember what his name Koba. was, but he yeah Koba, Koba. yeah he sh he was shooting the guns at the humans yeah. and stuff like that yeah. yeah he was the one that he was the one that yeah. killed the soldier yep. that didn't like to work with the apes that's right i never Man, saw I'm... this uh the the newer rendition of fantastic four um 
I it, didn't even know that it you, had Doctor you, Doom in it. Uh, you would have hated it. It was you, a mess. I'm sure I would have. Yeah, you would have hated it for sure. Um, I have no doubt in my mind. Um, yeah, Julian uh, Julian McMahon, he was the first one. That's right. Um, uh, I I liked him uh, in um, Fantastic Four, the first Fantastic Four. But, I mean, with that being said, I liked the cast of the first Fantastic Four as well. Um, I thought everybody that was chosen on that one um, was was really good as well. Um, so what about Dr. Doom? Just in general? Well, the story. Do you want a Dr. Doom movie? Do you think that... Well, I, can you do it? Do, I, or... I guess my thought is you're going to have Dr. Doom. You're going to have the Fantastic Four. I don't know how you could do it without him. Um, I don't know what other interactions mm -hmm. Dr. Doom had with other superhero personages. Right. So, I mean, this, this script was commissioned a while ago back when right. Fox still on the right. Mm -hmm. So, right. Um, my bet on whether this happens or not is not, or at least not in this current state. And I don't think they would do a Dr. Doom before they did the fantastic, fantastic four. four. Um, so, the the article said Noah Hawley is the guy who wrote this wrote the script. He did the TV show Legion for FX, Legion, right. which I think just yeah. finished his last season or it's almost done. Right. Um, and he also wrote the show Fargo, which I really like. If you guys haven't seen that one, but um, so I would have confidence based on his track record that it'd be a good script. I just don't think Marvel would want it to to shoot it that way, like as is. If they took his script, they would severely change it and probably like run it through their uh, whatever the, their storyline group or whatever that, guess, that they have. But I um, feel like the big thing for it is if if this is going to be part of the MCU, like how does it fit in kind of thing? Like unless this is kind of like that Joker movie where it's no, effectively a Marvel's standalone. Marvel's not doing that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't know. that's why I don't think it happens. It, yeah. I mean, it, it's in this article is basically just saying, hey, this the script, the guy Noah Hawley is saying script's done. It's out there. I'm going on vacation for a while. If they do it, they do it. If they don't, they don't. Call so me. I don't think they will personally. It sounds like it's, you know, someone's got to give it the green light. And unless it's a particularly compelling idea, um, you know, well, it's well, going to be a tough sell. Joey Bags commented in chat that Doom is one of the few successful villain comic books where, you know, it has its own thing. The article actually mentions kind of the same thing where, and I didn't realize this, apparently Fantastic Four and the Avengers have had run-ins with Doctor Doom. Um, so there could be a combination from that standpoint um, or, or a tie-in um, from that standpoint. So who knows, man? Maybe they do manage something out of it again to brian's point not necessarily this rendition of it yeah um but there might be something there at least in the future um if they're i think the of... character now that they have the characters under the same umbrella i the chances of a dr doom appearing in an mcu movie are high particularly high. because i think marvel definitely wants to capitalize on fantastic four i feel like that that's a franchise that hasn't been handled well and that they are confident in the ways that they handle their movies, that they can bring it into the MCU and and, and do it well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to take time to even integrate them into it, and I don't think you do Doctor Doom before you do Fantastic Four. If he's in the movies, he's probably in the the first Fantastic Four movie as their as their bad guy. It would um, make sense. I mean, yeah. with the risk of sound, seeming like a do-over of the last couple... But I think people would be okay with it now. Now that it's a do-over in MCU world under Kevin Feige, so and yeah. because it's so hard for it's hard for them to screw up right now. I mean, really, in the in the scheme of things, they can they they can be they can because you know, they've had uh, movies that have like some have obviously done better than others. But sure, you know. sure. Um, I'm excited. You know, they've already announced that there is a Fantastic Four movie. That was announced at Comic Con that there's going to be a Fantastic Four movie. Um, it wasn't on their phase, like their phase announcement. No, it's right? not in Phase Four, yeah, but it like wasn't we're on these date. characters. Correct. It's yeah. it's going to happen, is what they've is what they've said. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that, and you know, uh, 
where else can they go with it besides Dr. Doom? It'll, it only makes sense that he's their antagonist or protagonist, uh, antagonist, whatever the word is. Bad this. guy. Yeah, they're bad guy. So um, I'm excited for it. Just the progression of MCU. Um, they, they've, they've clearly have a plan and I don't know how far out it goes, but it's not just the next five years. And so uh, this could very well fall into, into the world. Um, Question is, do we get tired of all these comic book, comic book movies before we get there? There's a lot. There's a lot, but I, I think the box office has proven that nobody's tired of it yet. Not yet. I mean, we just finished one story arc, so can they make the next arc as compelling as this one with Thanos and the Infinity Stones? And I, I think that Marvel understands that they have no choice but to make it more compelling than Thanos because you've set a pretty high bar for yourself at this point in time and you've been doing it for the past 12 years. So it is logical that people would start getting tired of it and want to see, you know, what's the next big craze, if you will. Um, I, I believe they yeah, recognize I don't know if people that. would get tired of it because the reality is, you know, when did like the first like Superman, you know, movie that was like a really decent one, not like the Christopher Reeves stuff, but like, you know, like when superhero movies, I mean, Wasn't like I'm really saying like one? modern, I'm saying like How the modern. You? Who are yeah. you? I know Joey's probably going to throw knives through the monitor at me somehow. But I mean, just like, like, I feel like superhero movies, Batman, like we've been watching them for at least 20 something years. But they've gone in cycles. Like it, they haven't, they haven't been this think, many movies this many years in a row. I think the problem is if it's the same characters all the time. I think, yeah, like if you do a lot of movies with Batman and Spider-Man and Superman back to back to back to back to back, that could like at this point, you know, I think we're kind of like maybe getting tired of those particular characters a little bit more. I think if they begin to explore a lot of these other characters, you know, you think of the X-Men alone, there's God knows how many characters with very different unique abilities. There's a lot of stuff there that they could tap into. And just well, the same with other, you know, Marvel brands, like there's a lot of other things they could do that I think would keep it fresh. And they did, they, they kind of have, I think, shown that with, you know, you've got uh, Shang-Chi, who is totally different from anything else we've seen. You've got the Eternals, um, which is really different um, from a standpoint of, of a movie arc for them. Um, yes, we've done space and, you know, you've got Thanos, who is kind of in the same world as the Eternals, but it, but it's definitely different. And so I feel that that's kind of what they're what they're doing they're going a different route than where they are now i think this next slate of movies is going to tell the tale on how how people feel about it because what you're saying that these are these aren't like tier one characters in a lot of people's minds so these are some of the more obscure ones that maybe the general public doesn't under doesn't know or is familiar with so if they can latch on to these characters like they latched on to the original characters and you know the first saga of the marvel movies then I think they'd be in good shape. But if they start to see a decline and a trend downward because people just aren't interested or the actors don't work out for whatever reason or just the movies aren't as compelling to them, then I think they might be in trouble. Um, I think, you know, Joey Baggs actually makes a good point in his comment. He said, uh, comics sell once a month to the volume of 100,000 plus copies of hundreds of different comics. I mean that's that's yeah. a pretty vast audience. But the only reason the only reason these movies are successful or the main reason these movies are successful is not the comic book audience. It's the general public that is somewhat familiar with comic book characters and got more into them because of you know how attached they were to the movies that that came out. So the only yeah. reason that we have a Guardians of the Galaxy movie is because the movies prior to that were successful and they thought that they could you know take a chance on these new characters and try to introduce them. And then people love them. It's not it's the people, the amount of people that knew who the guardians of the galaxy were and still went and saw the movie is, or like prior to the movies coming out is minuscule in comparison to the people who had no idea and just went and saw it. I, I had no clue. And I remember the first, I remember the very first time I saw the artist rendition 
of the characters, you know, for the movie, like Marvel's artist rendition of it. And I was like, what? Is that a raccoon? Is that a freaking raccoon? It's a tree. (laughs) Do you see the tree? It's a tree walking. Yeah. Trash panda. Trash panda. Um, Murder dog and trash panda. Uh, 